Damn. All right, I'll be honest with you guys. I am a huge Mavericks fan, obviously. Obviously, you've been watching this show for a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. I did not see this coming. I did not see the Dallas Mavericks going into Milwaukee one game after losing Luka Doncic for the next two weeks at least, and you factor in a horribly deflating loss to the Miami Heat. I did not see them going to Milwaukee taking on probably your MVP frontrunner, and as this game showed, for good reason, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Dude had 48 points in this game, but even still, Dallas goes in, and they end an 18-game win streak. That is the longest win streak in the NBA this season. And what's even more incredible about it, yeah, you can talk about how there's that, that comparison, that parallel between the last championship team for Dallas, how they were streak busters throughout the year. They ended a 12-game win streak by Miami that year, a 14-game win streak, a Spurs, I think, double-digit win streak as well. That's cool. That's great. But in this particular case, the Mavericks were able to weather the storm without their superstar. And that is just huge, huge for this team. This is a huge emotional lift for this team. Now, they got off to a very hot start in this game. Seven three-pointers in the first quarter. Seth Curry cooking for the game. But KP also had 11 points in the first frame as well. It allowed Dallas to establish a fairly comfortable lead early on in this game. About a 12-point lead after the first frame. And in the second half, or in the second quarter, yeah, Milwaukee came back. They are a damn good team. And Milwaukee cuts it to three, I believe, going into the half in this case. Dallas was just just a little bit ahead across the board, whether you're talking field goal percentage, three-point percentage, free throws, all that. Just a, just a notch ahead of Milwaukee in that first half. But Milwaukee, they're relentless, dude, and they are a very, very talented team. And Dallas, even with that, behind Curry's ridiculous three-point shooting, which I want to give... Let me pull up the exact stats here for Curry shooting on the game. He has 26 overall for the game. KP with 26 as well. I don't have his blocks mentioned up there, but even in the final moments, he comes up with another huge block. Uh, first on this, Curry, 26 points in 26 minutes. Five boards, four assists, 9-15 shooting, 4 of 8 from 3, 4-4 four four at the line. Everybody who tore Seth Curry apart early in this year when he was struggling a little bit, you owe Seth an apology. Be honest, you owe him an apology. It's all right. I owe Tim Hardaway Jr. an apology because even though he missed some big free throws in the closing moments of this game, Tim Hardaway Jr. still had himself, you know, I take that back, six points. <laughs> Six points for Tim Hardaway. But you know what? Made just enough of those free throws during a ferocious Milwaukee comeback to uh, to hang on for the big win there. This game nearly got away from Dallas. Like, legit nearly got away. They were up, what, 20 points with, like, three and a half minutes to go? Milwaukee cuts it all the way down to 119-116 with a chance. Giannis gets an and one. I mean, just four plays in a row. It's like inbound to Giannis, he goes the length of the floor in four seconds or less and gets a bucket. And then he gets a blocking foul from Maxi Kleba, sets it up for a three-point play to cut it to a two-point game. That is insane considering Dallas had just been ahead just a couple minutes earlier in such dominating fashion to the point where the Mavs broadcast crew got caught kind of flat-footed basically calling this a wrap more or less. It's usually Derek Harper. Usually Derek Harper, but some of the other guys were in there doing that as well. And Dallas is able to thankfully make just enough plays in the final minutes, the final moments, I should say, to hang on and secure a 120 to 116 victory. KP reinserted back into the game during that Giannis free throw with about, uh, what was it, like four seconds left at that point. And KP's man. Middleton gets the ball. He gets the rebound on the Giannis missed free throw, but KP not only blocks the shot at the rim, but knocks it out off of Middleton as well. Dallas ball. They have to foul Hardaway Jr., who again splits free throws. And Dallas, yeah, finally learning their lesson. Hey, don't contest on this situation. We're up four. Let them take a three. They're literally trying to run into you. Steer clear. Let them throw up a three at the buzzer. It doesn't matter. So Dallas gets this win. Um, this is uh, 
I'm not going to lie to you guys. Even without Luca, in fact, I would say because it's without Luca, to me personally, this is now the biggest road win of the season. Dallas ferocious on the road, 10 and 2 on the road this year, and they've got wins at freaking Denver and at Milwaukee. Those are two legit wins for the Mavericks here. Let's take a second here. Now, I almost jinxed myself in a sense because, as I've said before, uh, whenever you have a really good win, you toast it with the good shit, and that's what we're doing here tonight, a little bit of scotch for the night. But uh, in this particular case, I was afraid. I had poured the glass, I had waited for the final couple moments, and I was like, oh, oh, did I jinx it? Thankfully, no, so I can actually enjoy this. Uh, let's talk about KP a little bit here. 33 minutes, 26 points. Oh, wait, wait. There we go. Have to actually enjoy it a little bit. 33 minutes, 26 points, 12 boards, 4 assists, 9 of 19 shooting, 4 of 8 from 3, including 2 just stupid deep daggers back to back there in those final few minutes of the fourth quarter. That really pushed that commanding Mavericks lead out there. And I think Rick even thought that was probably the good point to shut him down for the night. Like, all right, there we go. Kept him. You know, I mean, it's not like he added extra minutes onto him afterwards, but he basically took him out. And it wasn't until it was like in the final few seconds that he was like, hmm, we definitely need to get a rebound or something here. So, uh, Maxi, you're not a great rebounder. How about you go to the bench and KP, you get back in there as you've got a dozen boards on the game. Two blocks as well for KP. I mentioned that one. KP, he had to step up in this game. Dallas needed Kristaps Porzingis to step up and play. Not like he's not like he's in New York. I said going into even after the Luke injury, I said that they would not ask him to step in and play as if he is back in New York. But what they would do is probably run more things through him, run a little bit more of that two-man game. Uh, Curry was able to be the other guy on that other side this time, kind of balancing out that production. And between the two of them, yeah, if you can give me more than 50 points between Curry and Porzingis, I'm going to be damn happy. Now, yeah, I know. I mentioned earlier Giannis with a freaking 48-14-4 and four game, 18 of 31 from the field, 1 of 6 from 3, 11 of, what is that, 15 at the line? 16 at the line. A block and a steal. He's, he's, I love, love Luka, and I think he'll be a top three finish. If Giannis is able to put out production like this, it's going to be hard to see someone else passing him. He's already the reigning MVP. I know what Harden does, but everyone knows uh, why Harden's game isn't as enjoyable to watch. Giannis is a freaking freight train, and he's unstoppable. If you can prevent him from driving the lane on you, if you can force him into outside shots, then yeah, you can you can get at him a little bit, but I digress. The point is, Giannis was a monster in this game. No other, let's see, Corver had 17 points in 25 minutes. Kyle Corver's got a little something left in the tank, and I think Milwaukee's a good place for him. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot. Ilasova, 11, 11 points in 17 minutes, like the Milwaukee bench. Milwaukee's production overall, very good up and down the line. Brooke Lopez with a little bit of a downer game, only three points in 20 minutes, but even still Dallas has nothing to be upset about in this game. Yeah. You can say they need to execute a little bit better in those final three minutes, but Milwaukee credit to them. They saw their 18 game win streak hanging in the balance and they were not going to let it go without a last minute fight. And they gave that to Dallas. They forced a couple turnovers. Wesley Matthews did Wesley Matthews things, AKA running into Tim Hardaway jr's back before the ball was inbounded there by giving us two free throws plus the ball. Actually, I think they kept it a common, but still. Wesley Matthews uh, pretty much did Wesley Matthews things in that regard. Still, don't miss uh, don't miss that. That's one piece of the trade. Hey, nothing, nothing against Wes. He was a great character guy, great leader, but uh, his production has never been the same since the Achilles injury back in his Portland days. Uh, but in this game, Dallas gets pretty much a little bit of everything they need. Jalen Brunson had himself a bounce back game as well. 13 points, 11 assists, and four boards on four of nine shooting. Four of four at the line, including a couple big ones late in this game as Dallas is clinging. Justin Jackson, I love Justin Jackson. He's in a funk right now. 
Justin Jackson, he didn't have a bad game. Seven points in 17 minutes. The part that's going to stand out to a lot of people, however, is going to be the fact that he missed two straight free throws when Dallas was reeling late in this game. And it kind of breathed life into the Milwaukee charge because they come right back down in rapid fashion, get a quick bucket, and then Hardaway Jr. goes to the line. And it just it started a whole cycle where Dallas was suddenly backpedaling. Dallas had been near flawless at the foul line going in. They end up 22 of 27 at the line on the game. And in this case, let's see, Hardaway missed two and Jackson missed two. So four of those five misses came within the final 30 seconds. That is very telling here. This team still has a little bit of an issue with clutch free throws, but uh, Jalen Brunson knocks his down for what it's worth, has himself a nice, uh, nice game in that regard. Let me take a look here. Uh, do, 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 do. Solid game at a maxi. You know what? DeLon Wright, DeLon Wright, in his second game back, this was a gem out of him. 19 minutes, 13 points, three rebounds, two assists on five of six from the field. Uh, one of one on threes, two for two at the line, a block, and four steals. DeLon Wright. That dude is an unsung hero in this game. We might look at Porzingis and Curry, and Dodo had himself a great game. Uh, I, I had a, you know, I was talking on Twitter earlier with Rangers King, and he said, you know, hey, this game pretty much settles the Dodo versus Justin Jackson thing, the starter question and debate. I agree. I agree. And although I admit I pushed very hard for Justin Jackson, I always did say my issue, and I and I freely admit this. I did not think that uh, Dodo could add a quality three-point shot to his game. And so I said he's all defense with none of the three-point shooting ability. He can't be 3 and D without the three. And he's raised his bar a little bit this season. In fact, I want to take a look real quick here in real time at what exactly his three-point uh, percentage is on the year now. Let me see here. I don't know how quickly they update these after the game, but uh, his three-point percentage this season, <laughs> he's shooting still the same, 33.3%. Again, I don't know if this latest game is updated in, but he's shooting 30, over 33%. So a third of his shots, literally, from three have been going in this year. Considering he's a career 30.7% three-point shooter, that is a slight tick up. And he's getting more of those quality looks in the game, so it's making a bigger impact. His defensive energy... And all of that is also very, very good for the Mavericks and has made a sizable difference for the team this year. Let's see here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. For Finney Smith, 6 of 11 from the field, 3 of 5 from 3. 0 of 1 at the line, but he also gets a block. 35 minutes. That's a, that's a pretty sizable effort he was asked to take on, but I feel like he handled it pretty well, all things considered. And I feel like Maxi, you know, 10 and 7, he, he did it pretty well as well. Four of seven, two of five on threes for him and a block. Um, I know he had Giannis coming at him like a freight train, but I do think Max he had a uh, a pretty solid game on the on the quiet side there of that spectrum. So, yeah, this is a this is a very quality win for the Mavericks. I actually I kind of like that they had to grit it out a little bit there. I know you you learn more from defeat than you do from victory, but. I think this is good because you saw the team when they go up 20 and KP goes out. You saw them kind of get a little bit light, right? And 20 is an exaggeration, right? I think it was 110.95, so 15. But you saw them get a little bit light. And it was once it was once Milwaukee came storming back and suddenly, even on their heels, they eventually had to go. They had to right their balance and basically go, whoa, okay, no more. We're not, we're not giving up any more ground here. And they held on. Now you can say, hey, time was their their ally in that case. If you'd had another minute on the clock, does Milwaukee complete the comeback and win? Probably. I mean, with momentum being like it was, but you know what? In in sports, you have a time limit for a reason. You put yourself in that position and everything leading up to that final minute to have that advantage. So there's nothing wrong with benefiting from it. So yes, Dallas now will have a home game next against the Boston Celtics. This is another game. This was they held tight in Boston, but they did fade in those final few minutes as the Celtics pulled away there. It's one of only a couple 
fairly decisive losses for the Mavericks this year. And this is going to be an interesting challenge for them now. But the Mavericks now standing at 18-8 and eight, are third in the Western Conference. And they have officially ended the longest winning streak in the NBA this, se- this season. Beating the now 24-4 and four Milwaukee Bucks at home. If that's not a quality win that you can hang your hat on, I don't know what the hell is. So, yes. How long has this even been going here? Yes, this is a quality win. Uh, We're going to drink this in, and we are going to move on to Boston and hopefully see if we can keep this going. There's something about this team. Somebody brought up an interesting parallel real quick before I jump off here. Someone brought up an interesting parallel the other day talking about how in 2010-2011, the championship year, you know, Dirk went out around, I think it was Christmas Day, right around then. And then it was like the first week of January, like a week later, that Karan Butler was lost for the season as well. Now, I say as well, Dirk came back after like two, two and a half weeks out with a knee injury. But Karan was lost for the year. And the Mavericks, between Dirk's injury and then the Karan injury, in Milwaukee actually, went into free fall. They dropped. They started out a franchise best. I want to say 24 and 6 through the first 20 games. I could be slightly mistaken on that as some of my stats blend together over the years. But the Mavericks were off to a franchise best start that year, and it kind of came unraveling because of the Dirk injury. I mean, you lose your top two scores. Yeah, that's going to happen. But what's good about that is they did eventually weather the storm. They got all the way back to the three seed in the Western Conference playoff picture. And they learned how to play and how to fight for themselves and compete against good, better teams than them who weren't missing their superstars in the absence of their own superstar and their very quality number two scorer in Karan Butler. So what that led to, in my opinion, I think that feeds into, if you think then to game six of the finals that year, Dirk. Not shooting well. I mean, he ends up with 20-something points for the game. But in the first half, I think he's 1 of 12 from the field. And yet the Mavericks had the lead at halftime. Jet was crazy in that game, I know. But you saw how the rest of the team said, hey, we see Dirk struggling. It doesn't matter. We're going to lift him up. We are going to lift him up, and we are going to close this thing out. Maybe, just maybe, the Mavericks are doing something On a slider scale, at least we say slider for now, a slider scale for Luka in this case. They're looking at it and they're saying, you know what? Everybody recognizes that Luka is a top three candidate for MVP this year. He's playing out of his mind. He's doing things no 20-year-old has ever done in NBA history. And that's phenomenal. But we're really sick and tired of hearing people say that the Mavericks, other than Luka and other than KP, who they say even in that regard is only a shadow of himself right now, They're tired of hearing people say that the rest of this Mavs bench is garbage because they're not. They're not. And it's only the people who are on the outside looking in who aren't really paying that much attention. They see the two big names, but they're not really paying attention to what the rest of this team is doing and what Dallas is building in the continuity of this roster. You got different guys all up and down this roster who make a significant contribution every night, except for Courtney Lee. He doesn't ever really get any times. Hey, he got seven minutes here, though. Not really a whole lot there. You haven't seen Isaiah Roby or Josh Reeves or Antonius Cleveland, obviously. I'm talking about the main rotation, your top 12 guys. You got guys up and down that bunch who make plays and have big games that help this team win. So if Dallas can take the lessons from that championship year when they were without having to play without Dirk and Carlisle being the same coach that he was then, uh, same coach in terms of literally the same head coach for the Mavericks, he can, he can teach that same lesson. He can tell those guys and relate to that and say, look, we've, we've had to do this before. It's not uncharted territory. And that team got better. They solidified around it so that when Dirk came back, it was like Thanos dropping in the last Infinity Stone into the gauntlet, man. It was game over. That, now, okay, to be honest, I can't, I can't for the life of me envision Rick Carlisle making an Infinity Gauntlet uh, reference. But man, would that be a world to live in? I digress. The point is, uh, I'm, I'm liking what I see from this Mavericks team. They're showing more in this win, in their performance against Miami, even though it fell short, and this win. They're showing more 
without Luka, sans Luka Doncic, than I thought they would show. And I'm one of the biggest advocates for this team being really, really good. So, yeah. Let's stay tuned, man. Let's see what they can do against Boston. See if they can keep some momentum going here and keep playing tough. But uh, that's my time, guys. I'm DDP. Don't forget to like this video. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.